No, it's okay. Next next time. Next time it'll be good. All right. He'll he's it. making an announcement that he's gonna make an announcement. <laughs> I see how it is. You finally <laughs> caught on. <laughs> oh, so thank you. What- I'll be here all podcast. Welcome in the show 54 here, other technologists on Teal Town USA. Don't forget to subscribe to us on SoundCloud, throw us a review on iTunes, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and find us on Twitter and Instagram at Teal Town USA. I'm your host, AJ Strong, and with me as always, the one and only Rocket Back Ander. Hey, I promise I will never record our conversations if you let me drive you around. Rocket Back Ander. Oh, that's an Uber S comment. Uh, hockey jerk. <laughs> I don't have anything to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, give me a lift. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for the week in Sharks hockey, the boys are 3-2-0 and over their last five. 11-7-3 on the season. Good for 25 points. First in the division and third in the conference. Played two games since we last spoke with you versus Toronto and versus St. Louis. And despite having a one-goal lead after the first period and putting 45 shots on Anderson, the Sharks give up three straight goals while playing some of their worst defensive hockey this season. Versus St. Louis, things got a little bit better as Dell and company get a deja vu revenge, winning 4 nothing after being shut out 4 nothing in St. Louis eight days earlier, starting on Eric Carlson's first goal as a Shark. And you thought this was never going to happen, didn't you, people? Couture gets a three-point night. Gambrell would slot in for Charche, who goes back down to the Cuda for the second time this season. Of course, the last time Charche got scrapped he scored his first nhl goal the following game so let's get into the good the bad and the ugly of this week of sharks hockey and of course the good for me pavs has six goals three assists over his last five gets named the nhl third star of the week and after scoring one power play goal over eight games the sharks have scored power play goals in three straight the pk is second in the nhl these are all good Good things, Rocket. There's a lot of elements about this squad that are starting to come together. I still don't think that they've really stepped into their own, uh, but they're making progress. It's all good things. That's that's why this is the good segment. Uh, jerk, you're good. Well, uh, aside from um, Joe Pavelski, who's taken over uh, this team, it seems like every night there's a different guy who's scoring a goal. And you need that, you know, if you want to be a Stanley Cup team, you need that pretty much all year because as myself and my two co-hosts here have said many times, if the top guys go out, you need somebody else to step up. And we've seen that with the Sharks this year, especially with, I know they reunited that third line with Joe and LeBanc and Sorensen. That line continues to impress me even when they're not scoring. And, you know, obviously the Logan Couture line too, but... Joe Pavelski's line, as you said, AJ has been driving the bus the last few games and you know, this depth that we're seeing, it's, it's absolutely crucial for the sharks because we're, it's finally distancing themselves from that mindset of, okay, get the puck to Joe, go from there. It's like, no, we got four lines that are going to wreck you on any given night. Yeah. Hey, now, And let, <laughs> it's almost as if Pavelski's playing for a contract funny how that goes (laughs) so let's talk about the bad and of course for me the bad being hurdle going out yet again with a quote unquote lower body injury versus nashville uh we did see a couple screenshots that looked like it might have been something with a leg maybe got jumbled up i think if it was something with his knees again we would have heard something but it sounds like he will be ready to go versus edmonton so hurdle Jerk brought it up last time. Just get get a pair of those water rings and throw them around your knees. Put them bro. around your knees, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your bad rocket. Uh, my bad this week continues to be Eric Carlson. Um, and it's not necessarily him. I mean, you don't you don't end up being a two time Norris winner, you know, and then be like, he's had garbage. And then if anybody thinks that, you need to stop because you're wrong, and just 
just don't. Because mm, nobody's going to make you lasagna if you have that kind of opinion in life. It's not Eric Carlson's fault. I'm just saying, he looks bad. He's got three assists. And, he's got assists in three straight games and potted his first goal this week. He I can't know. be that bad. No, he's still, he's, he's out there on the ice for some vicious turnovers. Okay, that I will give you. Yeah. Uh, jerk, you're bad. My bad is whoever's decision it was to send Rourke Chartier to the Barracuda. Now, sure, he's not lighting the world on fire with, you know, 100 goals a game, but he's playing very well despite being a quote-unquote inexperienced rookie, as coaches would say. And I just think with, the, with, with Chartier and even to a lesser extent, should Gambrell stick – you have to stay the course with these guys. You have to allow them to work out the kinks and figure it out and go from there. You know, if you're, if Chartier is going to be going across the hall back and forth five, six times this season, it, it, it's going to hurt because as soon as he starts to gel up, oh, so you may have, you're on a three game point streak with the Barracuda come to the sharks and play less minutes. Oh, now you're doing this with the sharks. Well, go to the Barracuda, like one or the other, you just have to stay the course. But that's how they've been with Kevin LeBanc for the past couple of years, though. He's been back and forth. He'll be up in the in the Sharks, and then he gets cold, or he does something dumb, and then he goes back down to the Barracuda. Then came back up to the Sharks, and he goes back down to the Barracuda. I'm pretty sure they figure if they haven't completely damaged him completely as a completely as a player already, then they're just going to keep using that system until somebody breaks. See, I agree with you, but <laughs> I, I I look I look back to last year where. I think LeBanc was sent to the Barracuda once and then came back. And when he came back, you noticed they, they stayed the course with him and he had a really good second half to the season. Oh my God. Was it really only once? I think so. Wow. And it makes me wonder though, is it a case of Charche not doing enough or is it a case of, you know, Gambrell was just looking really good with the Cuda and it's like, okay, we got to give this kid more of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Could be both. Both things can be true, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just saying. Why not both? <laughs> so we get into the ugly. And for me, it's the Sharks Jumbotron graphics guy. You had one job. <laughs> be ready with the graphic when Carlson gets his first goal and you spell it E-R-I-C. You've had 20 games to prepare for this, buddy. How do you blow that? <laughs> Yeah. And the uh, although I will, I, it, it was ugly, but it wasn't fugly because it did give us some really good tweets, some funny tweets following that little graphics goof up. But that, if that's is like you're ugly for a couple of games, that's probably pretty good. <laughs> Rocket, what's your ugly for the week? You got retweeted by Wyshynski because of that. Oh, yeah. that's right. Uh, stick tap to Gen X for making that happen. I think he called it out to Wiz's. Uh, attention friend of the show right friend of the show. but ugly for me oh man <laughs> i don't have an ugly so i'm just gonna put something silly out there uh pete DeBoer. i'm gonna nominate pete DeBoer for this category just because um and if somebody pointed this out to me the other day pete always kind of looks like he just woke up from a nap <laughs> um i thought and, you were gonna like, go for just... the brody mustache but okay yeah, no, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna leave that nose neighbor alone. I just I'm gonna go for for Pete DeBoer's nap face, resting nap face, resting okay. nap <laughs> face. Yeah, <laughs> jerk, you're ugly for the week. Martin Jones. Ooh, uh, I, I got to I, I have make, to agree. Make a save. Make a save. Oh. Please. Five years after this year. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay so let's get the, that, that's a way to end ugly people so <laughs> you asked for it yeah no kidding yeah. so let's get into the three stars of the week to uh get a little more positivity up in here or what we call oh good for you we start with rocket your star for the week as much as i rag on the kid i think i'm gonna give it to kevin lebank because uh he went from 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 doing stupid junk and ended up in the penalty box or tripping and slashing to uh, drawing a penalty against against uh, the other team and uh, sending someone to the box. Good for you, Kevin. Thanks for listening to the show. <laughs> Jerk, your star. Joe Pavelski, uh, well-documented, my favorite player. Uh, five goals in his last four games. He's the captain of frickin' 
the USA of America. Like, what's there to not love about this guy? He's finally, in my eyes, getting back to being the player that he was three years ago. You know, uh, deflections are nice and it's fantastic, but he's taking more shots. He's playing a little more physical. He appears to be skating better. And like you said, AJ, contract here. But you know what? Stanley Cups, they're nice. So we'll see. I feel that. Uh, my star for the week, Logan Couture. Dude just keeps on humming along. They, you know, his best friend, his partner, Tomas Hurdle, injured, and he still keeps plugging away. Third on the team with points at 20. He uh, is leading the forward group and assists with 14. Only has four penalty minutes so far this season. So, dude is chugging along. So, those are the three stars of the week, or what we call... Oh, good for you! And... Here we go into Shark Bites. Now, if you follow SJ Sharky on the Twitter machine, he had a pretty fun little tweet. And this is where we get, I guess, into the Illuminati numerology segment. But I'm just saying, Pavelski scored the eighth goal of the season. Evander Kane, number nine, scored the ninth. Kevin LeBanc, 62, scored the 62nd. And last game, Carlson, number 65, scores the 65th goal of the season. I'm just saying, people, the truth is out there. It's out there. I'm not sure what all of this means. And you got to feel bad for Melker Carlson because Pavelski already scored the 68th goal. So I'm not but sure what more we can do. Does that mean that Joe Pavelski is actually Melker Carlson? is out there people the truth is out there well you know the the fact that melker carlson didn't get the 68th goal of the season makes me think he may never score again so <laughs> yeah when has he scored <laughs> i'm just saying uh, <laughs> okay uh, come back to me i got something funny yeah i got you well th- this is it for numbers games i'm moving on to the barracuda after this so if you got it flaunt it let your freak flag fly, my brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's okay. Next next time. Next time it'll be good. All right. He'll he's that. making an announcement that he's gonna make an announcement. <laughs> I see <laughs> how it is. You finally <laughs> caught on. <laughs> oh, so thank you. What, I'll be here all podcast. <laughs> Try the veal. The San Jose Barracuda paid tribute to the Cleveland Barons in a 5-0 demolishing of the Colorado Eagles over the weekend. Fun little thing going on where they had Douglas Murray and Jonathan Chichu out there signing autographs on the concourse during the first 45 minutes from when the doors opened. Friend of the show, Steve Cropper. You may know him, Mirror Man. Steve Cropper was out there with an impressive display of Cleveland Barons merch. I mean, Cleveland Barons, pint glasses, uh, jerseys, bobbleheads, player cards, many of them autographed. It was a really impressive display. So it, it was just a lot of fun. And it it hurts that when you look at the AHL standings, the Barracuda are number one in the Pacific. Now, granted, they had the, the lowest points of a division leader at only 21, but still 10 wins, only three losses. I'm telling you, do yourself a favor. Go catch some Barracuda games. They are really, really fun to watch, and they are just killing it right now. With that, I will throw it to my compatriots. Anything else around the league that has caught your eye since we last spoke? And I will begin with you, Jerk. So uh, one thing, today uh, <laughs> today is November 19th, 2018, and it has been 274 uh, U.S. days since Melker Carlson has scored a goal. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that's not, that's not where I thought he was going with it. I thought it was going to be like you know, it has been 132 days since Vodka was uh, was a shark. <laughs> um, no. So Edmonton Oilers uh, last week held a a meeting with with some upper management people. Since that meeting, they've lost two games. So really, anybody's guess where they go from here. AJ and I's Calgary Flames will be getting it on tonight against the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm excited to see where that one goes. Calgary's finally, uh, I don't want to say they're there, but I don't know. They might be there. Um, Check versus Reefs. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. And uh, 
L. A. L. A. Kings. Whenever I watch L. A. Kings games, it reminds me of that that uh, that Tom Petty classic. Anybody? Free fallen. <laughs> Hold on, you're talking Calgary versus the Golden Knights. Yes, you're talking about that that Golden Knights team that scored five unanswered goals versus Edmonton over the weekend. That's the that's the team you're talking about. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be a good matchup. <laughs> In <laughs> fact, you know what? What am I talking to you, Schmoes, for? I got to go watch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rocket, anything around the league for you? No, nah, man. Yeah, it was a pretty light week. You know, no coaches got fired. Nobody got their head taken off. Although, as we were coming together this evening for the cast, I did see that a member of the Florida Panthers had to be taken off on a stretcher after a wicked hit in the corner. Well, uh, you guys can look that up. I forget the gentleman's name. T- not Vin- Vinny, Vinny Trocek. Yeah, Trocek. So, the, oh, you know, th- thoughts and prayers, my friend. I have one more thing. Sure. Uh, so, Sharks prospect, uh, Ivan Chekovic, I'm sure you all remember him from his cup of coffee, cup of coffee, excuse me, with the Barracuda last year, leads the entire QMJHL with 41 points in 24 games. As we I... say, As we say here, might be good. Unsustainable. (laughs) However, though, I remember a lot of people talking about him this preseason. So, yeah, he really had a good, um, a good, you know, run with the Barracuda last year and a good preseason this year. Same thing with, um, same thing with Sasha Chemilevsky. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he stuck with the Sharks in camp really late, like suspiciously late, but, even then, I mean, 24 points in 23 games with the 67s, it's not bad. I think what we're saying here is, Goodrow, Melker, you're on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas Stanskoy, enjoy your three-year deal with the Panthers. Ooh. Oh. Damn. Okay. That was well-deserved. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into what's coming up for Team Teal. We got three games until we next talk to you versus Edmonton versus Vancouver and at Vegas. So let's start with Edmonton, who, as Jerk mentioned earlier, three and seven over their last 10. They come into SAP on a two game losing streak. They gave up three goals within two minutes and 12 seconds during the second period versus Vegas over the weekend. It makes you wonder how much longer T Mac is going to keep his job when right now they've won one of their last seven games. So jerk. I mean, do, do we start the pool? When do we start the pool on, on when he, uh, when teammate gets the, uh, Spanish archer, uh, about, uh, <laughs> oh. I'd say, I'd say about eight days ago. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, rock uh, dry sidle McDavid. Uh, these guys cannot carry all the water. There's only three, players on this team for Pete's sakes that have double digits in points. Now, granted, McDavid is killing it, but one guy, one of those guys goes down and really? Sure. Yeah, he has no support whatsoever. I don't know what the Oilers are planning on doing, and I don't think that they fully know either at this point. Uh, They're at a crossroads. They can either try to, you know, shore something up around McDavid, or they can trade him for future considerations and just embrace the rebuild. You know, it's funny you bring that up. There's a couple people that have mentioned that, that when you look at the generational player Connor McDavid is, what if, like, is, I'm trying to think of a team that actually has some a, a good amount of, I don't know, that handful of assets that would be like, okay, these would be solid, a- along with some top choices. Would you move McDavid for three guys that were, like, pretty solid? Like, okay, let's just say Nick David to the Sharks for Timo Meyer, Kevin LeBanc, Pavelski, and a first and a second rounder. How about not, no? Not enough. Mm-mm. For for who? <laughs> for you, if you're Edmonton and you're trading Connor McDavid, it's got to be it's it's got you're thinking like three consecutive first rounders. I'm plus? thinking, yeah. I'm thinking, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Hypothetically, assuming the Sharks have all their draft picks, a 2019 first, 2020 first, a conditional second in 2021, those are just draft picks. And then you're giving up Hurdle, you're giving up Timo Meyer, you're probably you're probably giving up Chemilevsky, and you're probably giving up like somebody to make it go through, like 
Jonas Donskoy or Melko Carlson. And that's maybe the yeah. low end of what it takes. Hey, how far forward can you trade your picks? Do you know what I mean? Like, um, say 2029. I think since it, since the 2019 draft is coming up, I think the latest you can trade is 2022. Yeah, that's okay. what I've seen so far. So you can't be like, okay, so we'll give you our first round pick for the next 10 years. Oh, man, if you could do that. Yeah. Yeah, there, there has to be a kibosh on that because there, there's a couple teams, let's be honest, that would have pulled that off. Yeah. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, Chiarelli at this point. Like, how come? How, well, <laughs> like, hey, we've already got the generational player. Here's our first Watch round. Watch it burn. So, so burn it all down. The, that's kind of like, that's kind of like if you guys saw the Eugene Melnick video. He he was quoted in that video as saying, "We're loaded up with picks for the next four, five, six years." Now, <laughs> take in mind you can only trade draft picks three years out, so already half of his statement is flawed. But when you look at those three years, you can actually trade trade draft picks for. I think he has an extra fourth. Wow. Yeah, are you loaded? I, I don't think so. No, so I think he, he's well, loaded, he's but loaded. in a different way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is the thing about the Edmonton Oilers. It's like, so you know how some vending machines, you know, $1, $2, $2.50 options. So you go to the vending machine and you want a $2 item, but you put in your $1 bill and it's like, and you push the button for the soda or whatever you want. And it says, oh, you need one more dollar. And it's like, no, yeah, yeah, there you go. I gave you a dollar. And it's like, no, you need two. And it's like, okay, but I, I gave you one. That $1 is Connor McDavid. The second dollar is everybody else and they don't have it. <laughs> that was a long way through that but i liked it <laughs> yeah gotta gotta keep gotta keep it interesting yeah. yes so after edmonton the sharks will finish up their longest home game stand six games surprise it's not longer but anyway the longest home one it'll be versus the canucks i don't say the v word because if you say it three times you get a short house impression so we'll let Vancouver. that go and coover <laughs> third in the pacific currently on a four game losing streak and a losing record on the road is this like the market starting to correct itself jerk because we we saw vancouver out of the gate like doing really well and you're kind of like wait what and la in the basement and is this like things actually starting to balance out now I, I would say so. I mean, even with the Pacific Division standings, just generally speaking, you're starting to see some separation between the top and the bottom. You know, the Sharks have finally got their head screwed on straight. Calgary's kind of separating themselves. I don't know exactly where Arizona is at, but I know they've won a stretch of games recently. So I think you're right. I think we're starting to see kind of things shake out the way we at kind of anticipated and we're starting to see that separation as well no you know no longer are there four teams tied for first <laughs> no I'm kidding i mean what I, I know rock you're a you're a besser fan but also a martin fan i'm not a besser fan th who was it me oh horvat oh horvat, uh, yes, That's Bo it horvat. yeah horvat but there's besser patterson i mean there are some Burnin. That's that's part of it, man. They have some talent. I mean, you can we could probably do thirty minutes just on Cam Talbot and Kiskinen, but Vancouver, I, I don't know. I, there was so many people that thought that they were just going to scrape the bottom of the barrel. Obviously, when a lot of those picks were made, Rocket Pedersen wasn't around, but there's still some talent on here. Talent, yes, but where's the? Uh, well, no, that's not true. I think that there are some pieces on there that are talented, but they don't have enough work ethic. And I think there are some guys on there who are all work ethic and not enough talent. Oh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, oh, man, I like no, that. I, no, I like what Rocket said. You know, they're <laughs> all of their good guys. They, and yes, they have good guys, but they're all young people. And, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a situation where you, you need to, like I said, with Work Chartier, you need to stay the course, work out the kinks, you know, kind of figure out like what it takes to play that 82 game season. Cause we see so many times young guys will start hot and then they'll struggle in the middle towards the end. So I think with Vancouver, like the foundation is there. It's a matter of just building up and obviously having an NHL caliber defenseman is necessary as well. Game update. There are four minutes left in the first period and Calgary is beating Vegas four to zero. Oh, man. 
Yeah. All right. Well, that that would be a fun. See that that would be a fun trade. McDavid to Vancouver for Besser, Pedersen, Horvat, three consecutive years, uh, number one picks. Be, no way. And, I would be gutted. <laughs> well, would they would never make. Like that. A, you're not only going to not make that in the same division. You're not going to do that in you know in the Western Canadian Triangle. It's just not going to happen. But boy, it'd be fun to speculate. Somebody. Fetch me NHL whatever it's video game where you can do all those things and see what happens. But uh, final one, at Vegas, which apparently is becoming the annual Thanksgiving trip on the Strip. <laughs> okay. Uh, currently 7th <laughs> of 8th in the Pacific. Uh, is Vegas now doing what we thought they would do last season, Rocket? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like last year was this weird sort of bubble anomaly almost orchestrated by the Illuminati behind the NHL to get a fan base. See? It's Illuminati. It's Illuminati. Um, did you get a fan base just all whipped up and rabid about it? Uh, a friend of mine went out to Vegas for a convention a couple of days, actually last week, and he said that it was Vegas night stuff, head to toe, everywhere. Pew. I mean, you go anywhere else to any airport and they don't have the hockey team in the airport they don't well yes and no see this is the whole this is the honeymoon the sharks were like this san jose was like this 93 94 yeah. you had stuff at san jose airport you had people all over downtown it was teal fever yeah. there was the store inside valco fashion mall there was other it was it was everywhere and yeah, 27 years later, not so much, but uh, this is, you know, this is the honeymoon. It's also the fact of, let's be honest, they don't have any other pro teams. So, you know, yeah. the one who brung you. Aren't they getting a football team? Yeah, the Raiders Whoa. are moving. Oh, okay. yeah, so. if, you can call, if you can call that a football team, but sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if we can call the 49ers a football team, we can call the Raiders a football team. Yeah. But, but that's but a different my, podcast. But my point being, though, is and this is kind of reminiscent of the sharks like if for some reason say the minnesota north stars instead of moving to dallas moved to san jose i think there still would have been some hockey fever but i don't think it would have been as significant of an impact you know if it was basically i don't want to say a retread but if it's a relocation it's like okay guess what you have this team now that has all this history somewhere else but now they're yours have fun that's one thing versus being there from the very start and i think that's one of the things that vegas is very much like san jose vegas has wrapped their arms around their very first real sure. team you know san jose this is their first team. yeah okay the, you have the san francisco teams the oakland teams it's the first san jose pro team same thing is happening in Vegas. And when the Raiders get there, sure. Good luck. Whatever. All I'm saying, picture this. To your point earlier, AJ, picture walking down the Vegas Strip with a turkey leg in your hand. Thanksgiving in Vegas. Oh, yeah. And Sign me up. Can't, can't you just do that at the Excalibur already, like any time of the year? <laughs> yeah, no, five zero Calgary Flames. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, who's in goal? Is it Flurry? Um, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if he was, he's not anymore. But right. you know what? Illuminati Rocket. How many? Uh, <laughs> how how many Stanley Cups does Mark andre Flurry have? Three. Three and how many points were on a triangle? Three. <laughs> oh, Illuminati confirmed. So <laughs> oh, we're we're gonna man, we're gonna milk that sounder. I'm letting you know now. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is it, kids. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, all of you. And we go to the final thoughts. We will start with you, hockey jerk, and where the people can find you on the social media. So, final thoughts. Like I said. Sharks are finally establishing themselves as the best team in the Pacific Division. Now, if they were the cent in the Central, would they make the playoffs? Remains to be seen. But in the Pacific, they're the best team, and they're starting to play like it. And I, it's about time, because there have been too many years lately where it's been, oh, the Sharks should have the division sewed up, no problem, like last year, like two years ago. And that didn't happen. So I think the Sharks are finally going to establish themselves as that dominant team. And I'm hoping that 
it goes beyond the regular season. Maybe some April, some May, some June, hopefully. If you enjoy listening to me ramble, who doesn't? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and nowhere else uh, at hockey underscore jerk. Rocket. Uh, my final thoughts for this evening. Uh, this team continues to frustrate me, and I guess that's good because if they don't frustrate me anymore, then I guess they bore me. And why do I need a professional hockey team to bore me? Hmm? And I just watch a boring team. Who's I boring? have a boyfriend to be bored with. What do I need? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I know. Who's, who's, uh, who's boring this year out in hockey? I guess Vegas is sort of boring this year. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> boring. I... I <sighs> This team still is struggling to find their identity, I think. I feel very much that the San Jose brand of speed, agility, and just enough physicality to, to put a punch on it, I think that that will be at the forefront of whatever it is that they decide to put on ice as a product. But they really are struggling to get there. But, yeah, at least they're finding goals. Last year, they couldn't find the back of the net to save their lives. So, hey, there's that. My name is Rocket Backhander, and you can find me on Twitter bemoaning Sharks hockey and lamenting things and embracing all sorts of other things and just living life digitally like you do, finding teal things online and sharing them. I found a teal barbecue grill the other day. Can you believe that? Uh, Twitter, Rocket Backhander. It's R Backhander 76, capital R, capital B, little Backhander 76. Or you can check out some fun photographs I take on Instagram. Mm, it's it's a lot of stuff at work and a lot of shark stuff and some teal things. And, you know, occasionally a plate of fried chicken. You know, you get down here in, in Nashville like you do. Anyway, that's uh, where you can find me on the social media. AJ? My final thought is I can't wait for New Year's. December 31st. That is the next time the Sharks will face the Calgary Flames. How great would it be if they're just like neck and neck? Although we just don't want to see that game end up like New Year's Eve game last year. You don't know what I'm talking about. Go look it up. It was in Dallas, and it was dreadful. You can find me, AJ underscore strong, on the Soch, Twitter, Instagram, also throwing up the gram for Teal Town USA. Follow us at Teal Town USA on Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you please. And once again, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a great turkey day or Chinese food or Italian food or whatever it is that floats your Thanksgiving day boat. We will see you in about a week or so. And with that, subscribe to us on SoundCloud and iTunes and whatever podcast catcher you use. We will see you all for the Double Nickel Show next time, 55. I have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around.